Hi, welcome to our sixth video of our Solidity course series. And in today's video, we are going to talk about state variables. So till now, we have covered so many different things about the Solidity course overview section. What is Solidity, Solidity sample program, compilation process, Solidity SPDX, Pragma, contract deployment environment, each and everything. So now our basics, is, basics are totally clear. And now we will talk about state variables. So let's start. Now in this video, we are going to see how we can create state variables in Solity. And to create state variable in Solity, first of all, we need to create one file in this contracts folder. I will create one file by the name of demo.sol. Definitely you can name it anything, abc.sol or whatever you want. And after creating this file, again, we will copy these first two lines and I have explained these two lines, right? What is the use of SPDX and what is the use of Pragma Solity in the previous video. Now we will give a name to our smart contract. So you can name it as demo or whatever you want. Now inside this, we will create our Solity state variables. Now what are basically state variables? State variables are basically those variables that you declare within these two parentheses. So any variable that is declared between these two parentheses is a state variable. So let's say if I am creating one variable, so first of all, you have to write the data type of your variable. So here I'm writing uint. Now what is this uint? uint is basically an unsigned integer data type. We will talk about this, but I hope you are familiar with integer data types, right? Like in C, we have int. In Java, we have int. In the same way, Solity provides us with this data type uint, which we will talk about in detail in our upcoming videos. So first of all, you have to write this data type. Then you have to mention the name of your variable. So let's say the name of my variable is num. Okay. Now after mentioning this, either you can put a semicolon. Okay. You can do this or you can initialize your state variable here only. So let's say uint num equal to five. So you can do this. Okay. Now in order to see the value of this state variable, let's say if you want to see what is actually stored in this num value in this num variable, in that case, you should make this num variable as a public state variable. And we will talk about this public specifier in our upcoming videos. For now, just take my word that whenever you write this public keyword before any state variable, you can actually see this state variable. Now, what do I mean by see it? So let's say First of all, let's uh, compile our smart contract and I'm just clicking on this auto compile guys. Okay. So that it can automatically compile my smart contract. I do not have to again and again, click on this compile button and I am selecting the 0.8.17 version. Definitely you can choose any of them, but I'm selecting the latest version for now. And now once it will get compiled, you will see a green tick here and now we will deploy it. So I will click on this deploy button. Okay, so now my smart contract is deployed and here you will see your num variable. So this is your num variable, right? Now, when you will click on this num variable, you can see that your value five is stored in this state variable num. Okay. Let me write it that this is a state variable. Now there is another way as well in which by which actually you can initialize your state variable. So what you can do is you can also create this constructor. So if you are from object oriented programming background, then you might be knowing this, that constructor is a special kind of function. And we will talk more about it in our upcoming videos. But for now, we can have this constructor. And inside this constructor as well, we can initialize or we can change the value of this smart contract num value, num variable like this. I can do this as well. And if I want, I can remove this previous value. Okay. And now if I will again deploy it, so again, this is our deployed smart contract. When I will click on num, you can again see now it is initialized with 10. Okay. And there is another way as well. Now I know there are so many ways, right? To change the value of your state variable. And that another way is, let me comment this out, that you can create one function and function will be our next topic where we will be talking about functions. But for now, I am just creating one function. Don't worry about the syntax for now. So function name is let's say setter. And 
in this function i want to set this value i will make this function public so that i can call this function okay and then i will simply have this i will have one more thing and uh, okay i do not i do not I will not require any more thing i can simply initialize this value let's say 200 so this is also another way by which you can initialize your state variable so let me delete it let me again deploy it so now again you can see that now you have two variables you have the setter functions actually not two variables two buttons so you have this uh, button for this setter function and for this num so now when i will clock this num at this point of time since it is not set yet you will see that initially it is showing zero and the reason is because num is a uint kind of data type and for uint data types if you are not going to initialize the variable then by default it will have zero okay but again we will talk more about this in our upcoming videos for now when i am calling this setup function and again when i am calling this num function and how do i know this setup function is successful because you will see that there will be a green tick once you will call this setup function let me call this again again you can see that there is a green trick right so this setup function is successful now when i will call this num so you can see that we have this value 100 so this is how you can set your state variables now let me share some important points related to state variables so state variables are those variables which cost you huge amount of gas so whenever you are creating state variables in your solidity smart contract you need to be very 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 much cautious because they are going to consume huge and huge amount of gas and we have discussed about gas right about ethereum gas about ethereum gas limit so you have to be very 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 much cautious here whenever you are creating a state variable you should create state variable whenever it is required do not try to create state variable everywhere if you think okay i need a state variable then and then only create this state variable now another important thing about this state variable is that whatever value you are going to store in this state variable that will be getting permanently stored on the blockchain so the first thing is i will share the ppt as well but the first thing is that they are costly and second thing is they get permanently stored on the blockchain permanently stored on the blockchain and that's why they are costly because you are renting the blockchain on permanent basis so permanently stored on blockchain okay so remember these two points so you have to be very much cautious whenever you are creating state variables but you will learn more about it as you will progress throughout the course for now i just want you to know these two points now let's see some of the important points related to these state variables first to change the default value of the state variable we can do three things right as we have seen also that we can change the value using the contract constructor we can initialize the variable at the declaration time only and then by calling this setter function right some other important points related to state variables first they are getting permanently stored on your blockchain on your contract storage so when i am saying contract storage actually i am saying i am telling that it is getting permanently stored on your blockchain okay then they are expensive so you have to be very much and the third point is that reading of state variable is free so you can read your state variable you can just view your state variable so if you want to read data from your state variable like we were doing right we were when we were calling this num variable we were just reading from the state variable but whenever we were whenever we were changing the state variable whenever we were changing the value of the state variable when we use the constructor we were changing the value from of the state variable right by having num equal to 5 or when we were using this setter function we were actually writing to the state variable by doing num equal to 100 so by these things we are actually changing the state variable and changing the state variable is again a costly thing so declaring the state variable is a costly thing writing to the state variable is a costly thing but reading of state variable is totally free you can read any data that is available on the ethereum blockchain for free but writing or changing the state variable is a costly thing i hope you have liked this video if you have liked this video please click on that like button if you are new to this channel please subscribe to this channel because i am regularly going to upload new blockchain courses on this channel to meet you soon in the next video till then take care bye bye and do not forget if you have any doubts please comment below okay